Good morning. No, Chloe. Good morning. I'll wait for orange shirt in the back row to go sit down. Actually, fun story. He won a home run derby on Monday. It was actually pretty cool. Good morning. Um, I was going to give this whole spiel about announcements, but we have this new fancy announcement board, so you can just look out there on your way out. Um, my name is Jesse. Uh, most of you guys know me, but I'm just going to continue our prayer mobil mobilization that we've been doing um, from Easter Sunday to Pentecost Sunday. So there are seven more days if any of you guys have been counting. So I'm going to read the scripture. We're going to take 30 seconds, and then I'm going to pray. 30 seconds of silence, and then I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get on with worship. So the scripture for today that the um, district superintendent out of northwestern Ohio is Hebrews 5, 7, and it says this. In the days of his flesh, he offered up both prayers and supplication with loud crying and tears of the one able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his piety. 30 seconds of silence. God, we just, we call for your will over our lives. We ask that you go forth, that you prepare the way, that you are behind us and before us and left and to the right, that you will always be around us, that you can live in us and through us, that the people in our lives can see you, that we can cry upon your name and have tears that just praise out your name that we can just show the world who you are and what you've done for us. God, the sacrifice that you've made so many times and times again for us is astonishing. And let us not take advantage of what you have done for us or what you'll continue to do for us, but let us just to march in that step, in those, in those movements, in those, t those tears in our stomach as we are ready to move, but sometimes too timid. God, speak to us, speak through us, and continue this changing in our lives through this prayers to Pentecost. Use these like next seven days to really just dial us in to what to, is to come in seven days. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> He on me, we ran sick with sin, and on his shoulders brought me back to his fold again. While angels in his presence sang, until the courts of heaven rang, oh. The love that's on me, oh, oh, oh. the love that upon me, oh, the grace that brought me to the fold of God. Grace that brought me to the fold of God. He died for me while I was sinning. Needy and poor and blind, hallelujah, whisper to assure me, I found thee, thou art mine. I never heard a sweeter voice that made my aching heart rejoice, oh, oh, oh the love that's on me. Oh, oh, oh. 
grace and brought me to the fold of God. Upon His grace I'll daily ponder and sing anew His praise. Adoring wonder, His blessings I'll retrace. It seems as if eternal days are far too short to sing His praise. Oh, oh, oh. the love that's on me. Oh, oh, oh. the love that brought me. Oh, the grace that brought me to the fold of God. Grace that brought me to the fold of God. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, dark and strong. at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our God sing me how great is our God oh we'll see how great how great is our God
our God, sing to me how great is our God, I will see how great, how great is our God, he's the name above all names, he's the name above all names, he is a word. sing how great is our God. One more time, the name above. He's the name above all names. He is worthy of our praise. And my heart will sing how great a be seated kids moment and what we do is we take all the kids and we put them up here on stage and we ask them questions and we kind of ask them to dive into hard questions fun questions and stuff like that so now I'm going to invite every kid that is under the age of 12. Sorry to some of you that identify as kids. Um, but every kid that is under the age of 12, will you please come up here and sit down right here on the stairs and we're gonna ask you a few questions. You did sit here first. That means you have to answer the first question. Oh, look, see? It could be anyone. <laughs> She, she's a kid in our heart. Hi. Oh. Okay. Now that most of the kids are walking up here, we're going to ask you guys a question. The song we just sang asked a question. It said, how great is our God? Kind of a hard question to answer. Worthy of our praise. That's great. Good job. That's a great answer. Anyone else? Any other question that if... How great, how big, how strong, how powerful is our God? Worthy of our praise. That was a great answer. That's another valid answer. It's all, it's just imagination. You guys are kids. You guys have an imagination. We're adults. We don't have those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, the next question is, since we don't have school tomorrow, what time are you guys going to go to bed tonight? 100 years. 100 years? Jaden? 9 p.m.? Wow, you're a good kid. Marshall? Oh, okay. You still have plans tomorrow. Okay, and then the last question before we go downstairs with Miss Veronica is, if you can do anything you want for a full day, what would it be? Vivian. Randomly having the power to keep the house clean. Solution, don't make it messy. <laughs> Amelia. Going to the Great Wolf Lodge, Jaden. Fly 100 miles per hour. Throw 100 miles per hour. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You would not be in this church. You'd be in the pros. Anybody else? Any day, any way you can spend your day. Tyler, I know you got an answer brewing in your brain. Vivian, another one? Sleep without waking up. Marshall, play video games all day. Tyler. What? Are you sure? Do math all day? Whoa. On that note, we're, I think they're really tired. Um, do any of you guys want to pray for us before we continue in worship and you guys get to go downstairs and learn a story and eat a snack and have some fun? Do you, does anyone else want to pray or do you want me to? You want to pray, Noah? Ready?
Dear God. God, Lord, we just lift up these little lives, these kids who get to see the joy of who you are and the magnificent of what you can be, the imaginations that run deep and the stories they could tell. Um, Lord, I just I pray that you live that in our lives and that you show these kids every day that they can just, as they serve a God who is so powerful that we can't fathom. So God, as we go downstairs, I hope that you be with them, you be in their, in their moods, in their swings, that they can be so great for Miss Veronica, and we can continue to worship up here as adults and get to hear your message. In your name, amen. Speaking of uh, imagination, this song is, Did You Feel the Mountains Tremble? God can move mountains. Sometimes that's a physical mountain. Sometimes that is a mountain in our own life where we feel like we're just uh, having a hard time, but God can do those things. Let's continue worshiping through song this morning. Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing out, Jesus Christ, the risen one. Did you feel the people tremble? Did you see the singers roar? When the lost began to sing out, Jesus Christ, the risen one. And we can see that God is moving, a mighty river through the nations, when young and old will turn to Jesus. Bring wide you heavenly Saints join in one song, and all the streams flow as one river, and wash away our brokenness. And we can see that God is moving, time of jubilee is coming, and young and old will turn to Jesus.
heavens roll when the people rose to sing of him, Jesus Christ, the risen one. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm going to come down here and set up here, if that's okay. Uh, so good to be with you. Let's, uh, let's read our passage, and then I'm going to introduce myself a little bit, and then I'm going to read to you um, a children's book that I brought with us today. I'm going to go ahead and just ask if you'd go ahead and stand where you're at, and we will, we're going to read from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Read along with me. Prescribe and teach these things. Let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Show yourself an example of those who believe. Until I come, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation and teaching. Do not neglect the spiritual gift within you which was bestowed on you through prophetic utterance with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. Take pains with these things. Be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Persevere in these things, for as you do, you will ensure salvation for both yourself and for those who hear you. Father God, thank you so much uh, for your word. Thank you for how it guides us in all that we say and do. And we just pray that as we dig deep into this passage, that uh, your word would be present to us. It would penetrate our hearts. We love you. We thank you. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, if you're wondering where Pastor Keegan is and, and who in the world am I, uh, Pastor Keegan is out today, baseball game uh, with his son, and um, so just real quick, a little bit about myself and, and kind of why I'm here. Um, first of all, my name is Joshua Steins, but I haven't had the chance to meet you. I served on staff at uh, the Nazarene Church in Kent from 2012 to 2019, and then um, in April of 2019, I accepted a position of where I currently serve, which is Cascade Christian Schools, located in Puyallup. We've got five campuses, three elementary that feed into one junior high high school. Um, I get to do their things like our spiritual theme. I get to work with leaders on our district on things like chapel. Um, so uh, that's where I currently serve. But throughout those years of working at, at the Nazarene Church in Kent, I had the opportunity to get to know Keegan and uh, get to, got to do ministry with him. Um, in fact, uh, doing ministry with him was actually where I got to meet Jesse um, as, a, as the camp director, um, I believe in 2015. But uh, anyway, that's when Pastor Keegan uh, reached out to me and asked if I'd be willing to, to come and just share. And, uh, and so I'm completely honored to be with you this morning. Um, I'm here today real quick with uh, my wife, 15 years, and my two kids, Jaden, he's four. Ava is two, and then uh, Paige's mom, Lisa, is here, and she's ne sitting right next to a really close friend of ours, Brian, and so uh, they are all here today as well, so we're excited to, to be with you. Um, we're, also getting, we're also looking forward to getting to know you as well. Uh, we're in the process of transitioning to Tacoma, and so it's going to give us more opportunity to swing on over here um, as we... Uh, as we settle down here at Gig Harbor Church in the Nazarene. Um, being a dad is, it's, it's exciting. And uh, one of the things that I've learned about being a dad that I love is reading to my kids. It's one of my favorite uh, pastimes. I, I, I love to read in general, but, um, you know, reading with my kids beats any day, uh, watching TV or um, for me. And so I, what I did was I brought a book 
that I wanted to read to you as a way to jump into our passage uh, today, 1 Timothy chapter 4. So I'm wondering if you would allow me the chance to read to you the little tug. Very first page says, meet little tug. He's not the tallest boat in the harbor. He's very tiny. He's not the fastest boat in the harbor. He's not the biggest boat in the harbor. But when the tall ship is still, and the speedboat's motor breaks down, and the big ocean liner cannot fit into the harbor, he pulls, talking about the tugboat, he pushes, and guides the boats to safety. I'm going to stop there. Um, Why, uh, you know, I think think there's a lot of really great lessons in that little little story there. Um, But one of the things that I really like about it is how it really speaks to this idea, not just for young kids or or teenagers, but, but I think adults, and then also for the church as well, speaks to how easy it is for us to lose sight of who God called us to be and who God created us to be. And and if there's a lesson in this little story for us in the church, it's to stay true to who we are and to who God called us to be. And the reason why I bring that up today is because as you begin to read 1 Timothy chapter 4, you really get this sense that the church is being pulled in a variety of different directions. Uh, You get this feel that it's it's starting to lose sight of who God called it to be and and, and starting to lose sight of its identity, starting to lose sight of who we are and whose we are. And uh, if, if the Bible is a testament to anything, it's that when we become something other than who we were created to be, it the the result will always be we will always experience negative consequences. Amen. And uh, Paul, in fact, um, is concerned about that. And in in the first chapter, actually, Paul uses nautical language to describe what happens when we we become something other than who we were created to be. 1 Timothy chapter 1, Paul says, I'm giving you these instructions, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies made earlier about you, so that by following them, you may fight the good fight, having faith and a good conscience. By rejecting conscience, certain persons have suffered shipwreck in the faith. So Paul knows that when we become something other than who we're called to be, the end result is shipwreck. So today, if you have your notes here and a, and a pen, I want to invite you to follow along today as we talk about what is, how do we avoid shipwreck in regards to the faith. Do we have any boat people? Any any people who love boats, who love being on the seas? We're going to talk about that today, a little bit about that. So how to avoid shipwreck. At the very first, Paul comes right out of the gate, in the passage that we have today. And he says, prescribe and teach these things. What, is, what are these things? What is Paul referring to here? Well, he's talking about the gospel. He's talking about the, the, the teaching that transformed his life, that was passed down to him through the laying on of hands of the elders, that he then passed off to Timothy, that Timothy received through the laying on of the hands of the elders. 
and that was ultimately passed down from generation to generation until, until we receive it today. When Paul says prescribe and teach these things, he's talking about the gospel. And I want to encourage us to think today, when it comes to thinking about how to avoid shipwreck in the context of of false doctrine, um, I want to encourage us to think about these things uh, as the gospel, as our navigational manual. So if you're if you're if you're taking notes and you have the you like the fill in the blank thing, I'm going to direct you to this. These things are the gospel. And then the gospel is our navigational manual. What do I mean by that? The gospel is our nav- navigates us in this way. Um, the, the, the cool thing about the gospel is that it can be retold. It can be, it can be uh, storied in a variety of different ways. And so uh, there's, there's three components that you, you should always look for. Um, when it comes to the gospel. The gospel should always tell you that you're saved by something. What do you think the, that by something is? By grace, right. By the, by the grace and work of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We are saved from something. And what do you think that from something is? From sin, exactly. And then we're saved for something. What do you think that for is? Good works. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit bigger and I'm going to say the mission of God. Mission of redemption. We are saved to partner with God to, to bring about the, the, the mission of redemption for the world. That, that this amazing story of redemption that, that God is on. And if you were to if we were to just kind of zoom out just a little bit and we were to uh, just take a look at just those three basic things. Um, you can kind of begin to see how um, if, uh, how kind of a, a, a either a tampering with or, or kind of doing without can, can, can change all of the rest of the pieces. So, for example, um, if we were to change the saved by grace or saved by Christ, if we were to take Christ out and we were to put uh, finances or our job in that order, you can see how that begins to change the narrative of, 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 of where we come from. Uh, if we were to take, um, take that out and we were to put a relationship, or if we were to, to take Christ out and we were to put good works, you can begin to see how that not only changes our, uh, the narrative of, of our understanding of where we come from, but it also begins to change the course of our life. Um, and so the gospel has uh, those three major components. The, the gospel guides us it reminds us of who we are, and it reminds us of whose we are. Um, I, in preparation for um, today's message, I did a little bit of research on shipwrecks. And, you know, shipwrecks happen as a result of, of, of many different reasons. It's different every time, right? Uh, but what can and often does happen, what I learned, was that shipwrecks happen as a result of committing navigational error. Just, uh, just minor errors of, 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 of leaving the plan for how a, a, a captain will navigate the ship from, from point A to point B. The gospel is our navigational manual. The more we stick to it, the closer we stick to it, the more we're going to stay on course. Amen? Um, so, Paul says, prescribe and teach these things. In another translation, it says, uh, Paul says, keep on prescribing and teach these things. This is something that we have to continually come back to. You, think, you see, I think sometimes we often lose our identity. We lose our, our purpose. We lose vision of who we are because we fail to come back to this thing called the gospel. Paul says to prescribe and teach these things. And then what happens, as you're making your way through this chapter... The next passage is uh, this passage that we've, we've all heard about. Um, or it's a very familiar passage. It's a passage where Paul says to Timothy, he says, don't let, let anyone look down on you because you're young. And oftentimes, uh, I know I do, I stop there, and, and I've used that passage as a way to encourage young people 
uh, to empower them, to help them not feel insecure because of their age. Um, and I don't think that that's bad. I think it still works. Um, I think that's something we need to continue to do. But the context of this is actually being an example. Paul says, uh, let no one look down on your youthfulness, but rather in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity, show yourself an example of those who believe. So because Paul was talking to a young Timothy, he was talking, he, he referred to his youthfulness, but he could have easily been talking to any one of us. He could have easily said, let no one look down on you because of, because of how advanced in age you are. He could have easily said, let no one look down on you because of where you live. Don't let, don't let anyone look down on you because of who you are. But, he's, but instead, he says, be an example. The reason why I bring that up, why is that important? Because Paul knows that if we're going to stay on course, if we're, not, if we're going to, to not lose sight of who we are, Paul says, we need to not just be close or have a navigational manual, but he says we have to be an example of it. We have to be an example of it. And so if you're following along here with the notes here, being an example, the, the, the idea here is that we need to not just know the navigational manual, but the navigational manual has to live inside of us. That's what being an example, that's what Paul's talking about here. And so you might be wondering, well, how does, what does that look like? And, and Paul's, it's just amazing. When you, when you get into this, there's three things that Paul gets into the weeds with uh, Timothy on and with us. Uh, he says, first he says, how do we become an example of the navigational manual? He says, uh, be absorbed in it. Be absorbed in the, in the navigational manual. Be absorbed uh, in the Bible not just, on, not just once a week on Sundays, but picking it up Monday through Saturday. Be absorbed in it. You see, um, if we're going to be an example of this navigational manual, we have to, we have to immerse ourselves in it. Um, we would never set foot on a cruise ship if we didn't trust the captain to have immersed him or herself in the plan for how they're going to navigate the cruise ship from point A to point B, right? And so Paul, Paul understands this. Paul says we, we have to be absorbed in it. If we're going to be an example, we have to be, we have to be absorbed in it. We have to, to get into it. We have to study it. We have to, to ask questions. Um, I have the privilege of working with students, and this past year, um, we held a, a Q&A panel on, um, just gave students the opportunity to ask questions about the authority of Scripture. And can I just tell you that the questions they were asking as 7th and 8th graders just absolutely blew me away. They were asking questions that I spent a couple thousand dollars over the course of eight weeks studying, trying to unpack. Um, our youth are, are hungry to, to know the word, and, uh, and, and we, can't, um, we can't answer their questions if we're not in it ourselves. I'm not saying that you have to have a, a master's degree, but if we're going to, to, uh, to guide our students by giving them the answers that they're looking for, we have to ourselves be immersed in it. Um, Second thing, so Paul says be absorbed in it. How do we be an example? So first he says be absorbed in it. The second thing he says is to pay attention to yourself and to the teaching. Pay attention to yourself and to the teaching. Um, what I love about this is, is the, the Greek word that Paul uses for, for pay attention is epeko, and that word actually means apply. Another way to, to understand that is, another way to, to articulate what this Greek word means is to bring forward or to present. And I just love what Paul's doing here because you, you get this sense that Paul says you've you got to be immersed in it, but it's not enough for you to immerse in it. It's, you have to, to take it, and you have to bring it forward in your life. You, you, have to, you have to make it present 
to anything and everything that you do day in and day out. He says, uh, uh, bringing it present, bringing it forward in the business meeting that you're going to have. Uh, bringing it forward and applying it, allowing it to, to, to guide you in the way that you drive to and from work. Uh, allow, bring it forward and, and allow it to, to be a guide for how you're going to interact with those around you. Uh, Paul says if we're going to be an example, we have to not just know it, but we also have to apply it. Again, going back to the analogy of a, of a captain of a ship, um, we would hope that uh, the captain of the ship not only knows the plan for how they're going to navigate us from point A to point B, but when that, when that horn blows and it's time for the ship to embark on its journey, we hope and trust that the captain is actually going to begin to apply. He's going to apply it as he takes us from point A to point B. When we do that, when we find ways to apply it in everything that we do, what happens is we're aligning our life with our navigational manual, with the gospel, with, the, with these things. Finally, Paul, it's not just enough to, to immerse ourselves, to absorb ourselves in it. It's not just enough for us to pay attention to ourselves and to, and to making sure that we're... we're, we're we're applying it, we're staying on track. The third and final thing that Paul says is we have to persevere in it. I have to say that um, this message is not for the faint of heart. In fact, um, uh, absorbing yourself in Scripture, taking time and effort to, to, to think critically about it and, and to figure out how you can apply it in your, in your daily life, and then actually living into that Right? That is, in and of itself, an incredibly hard thing to do. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes patience. Right? Then you add that on top of just the daily grind of living. And then you add, you add uh, um, just general crises that happen, that come up on a day-to-day -day basis in life. You're talking about something that's incredibly challenging with all that's going on in our life. But Paul says here to persevere in it. That's why I think it, 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 requires, uh, it requires community. It requires accountability. It requires support to persevere in these things. Amen? Um, be absorbed in it, applying it, and then persevering in it. And I just love um, how, this, how Paul concludes uh, he says that, um, uh, he's, after he says persevere in these things, he says, for as you do this, he says, you will ensure salvation both for yourself and for those who hear you. And if, you're, if, you're, if you've been tracking, you should, your tugboat should be, the, the, the tugboat sonar should be popping in your brain right now. Um, it, what happens is, is when we do these things, Absorb ourselves in it. Uh, pay attention to it. Align, ourself, align our, our lives with it by applying it and then persevering in it. What happens is, it's, it's, it's amazing, the grace of God begins to do His part over time by taking the navigational manual that's out, that was outside of ourselves and He begins to shape and form us. He begins to shape that navigational manual inside of us. He begins to write that on our heart so that, um, so that over time what happens is, is the navigational manual begins to, to, to guide literally everything that we say and do. Um, and and if, you're, if you've been in the Church of the Nazarene for some time, we, this is what we call the second work of grace. This, 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 this second work that once, God, once, once you're justified by the work of Jesus on the cross, then you begin to enter into this amazing relationship with, with God in which he begins to shape and form us and build, trans, build a Christ-like character inside of us. And the cool thing about that is, is that as God does that, he begins to use our transformation to then begin to transform others around us. 
And what happens is, is we become the living, breathing navigational manual that people come in contact with. Do you know that most people that we come in contact with, that we work with, our families, they're going to, before they hear the gospel, they're going to come in contact with you first. And so you're, you're, you're in a lot of ways going to be the, the hands and feet, the living, breathing guide that, that is directing them to the one who can transform their lives. That's really cool to think. Um, as we close today, um, as we wrap up, I, I, uh, I, want, I want to encourage you just to think about what, what navigational markers um, do you have in your life? And I've um, been kind of really wrestling with what this is going to look like and, and how I might challenge you. And um, I, I really want to encourage us to, to think about how God might be inviting us to, um, to get into the navigational manual. For some of us, that might mean reading scripture or listening to scripture on the way home from work. Um, I've been pleasantly surprised recently that uh, um, you, you, could prob- you, could, you could listen to the entire book of Timothy in 30 minutes or less, just listening to the, listening to the audio version of it. Um, uh, for some of us, that might mean setting alarm on our phone to say the Lord's Prayer. Um, for some of us, that might mean finding people in community that, that can help us uh, to, to persevere in these things. I'm, I don't know. I don't know what this looks like for you, but I want to encourage you as, as, uh, as we close, as the band comes up, as Jeremy comes up, I want to encourage us to, to think about how might God be guiding you to get into the navigational manual? How might he be inviting you to, to get more into it? Um, would you agree that our world is desperately longing for hope? Would you agree with me that our world is desperately longing for purpose and meaning? So oftentimes for us as the church, it's, it's so easy for us to lose sight of who we are. It's so easy for us to, to point fingers. But Paul is saying here, don't focus on them. He's saying, focus on yourself. And he's saying, I will take care of the rest. And, uh, and it starts with you and I. It really does. And so uh, I want to encourage us how the question would be, how might God be guiding you into the navigational manual today?
when I am alone. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. He can have all this world. Just give me Jesus. to die when I come to die give me Jesus give me Jesus give me Jesus you can have all this world give me Jesus song today and this this song is probably going to be new for most people in here and but it's a song that uh asks the question are you ready now and when i say you i'm I'm looking at this guy too right uh are you ready now and uh and there's a question in the message about you know what what is our next step what is your next step how are we going to take these words take this scripture this god breathed word that we have that we can hold and we can read and we can hear and how do we absorb that and how do we then after absorbing it give it away right how do we do that and so what is our next step what is your next step and so if you are reflecting during this song that's cool if if you want to sing out especially in the bridge section where it just repeats these words ready now ready now i'm ready now do what you will right do what you will what is god's will in our lives so Like you promised, you would. I want to surrender for oh good. I know that I need you, and I don't want to keep living life alone. So take my heart and make it new, make it true. Make it like you Take my hands And lift them high They are not mine to do Do what you will Do what you will Do what you will I feel like a blind man In your sight that I'm wicked in your eyes, so 
Wash me and make me shine like a sun. I want to tell everyone you're the only one. So take my heart and make it new. Make it true. Make it like you. Take my hands. I lift them high. They yours, not mine to do. Do what you will. Do what you will. Do what you Take my heart, make it new, make it true, make it like you, Lord. Take my hands, oh, I lift them high, they're yours, they're mine to do. Do what you will, do what you will, do what you will. so good to us. We want to thank you for the word this morning. We just ask that as we immerse ourselves, as we absorb ourselves in your word, we pray that you would, that we would be an example to it, to those uh, examples of it, to those around us. We pray that uh, you would just give us strength, especially in those moments when it's uh, um, strength to persevere, especially in moments when it's hard. We pray that you would just guide us and direct us in that. Now I'm going to read uh, from Numbers chapter 6. I want to encourage you to receive this blessing as you leave from here today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You are dismissed. Have a great week and don't forget your navigational manual.